Hello, everyone, and welcome back Hello. to Anime Church. Uh, we fuck up. A but lot. actually, this time, actually, this time, I think, I don't want to jinx it, but I think everything is pretty good to go. Aside Double from Moon not being sound. on camera. Well, no, 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 that's, that was on purpose. That was on purpose, I thought. He just said he finished. Um... Yeah, I, I just finished watching the episode, so it was yeah, on but, purpose. No, 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 he, he just, just finished. Nobody needs to see that on camera, guys. Come on. You have to go to a different website for that. It's orange. Well, it's, it's, orange. It's, it's orange. orange okay. God, it's orange just... YouTube. It's orange YouTube. All over those YouTube. nice clothes, too? Come on. Yeah. Hey, it's only the bottom half. <laughs> <laughs> All over those nice clothes. I'm fine clothes. so long as I don't stand up. <laughs> a little something standing up. Uh, hey yo! <laughs> not anymore. It's not. <laughs> it's, it, it's hey. I don't know. I thought it was a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Just laying there. Oh man, good yep. stuff. Uh, it's a short episode. Oh, okay. It's a short episode as far as like the content to talk about. But we've got we've got a lot to say about the short amount of content. So that's cool. Uh, so guys, if you didn't know, CinemaCon happened this year, and. Uh, uh, happened this weekend, and they only released two trailers. The fuck? I'm kind of mad because they got to see 12 minutes of footage from uh, Deadpool and Wolverine. And we saw nothing and we heard nothing about it. Hmm. I'm mad. I'm, I'm just a little, I'm just a tad upset. But apparently, but apparently Disney, unlike last year, had the best, the best panel this year. As opposed to last year where it was the worst. This year they had the best panel. So, uh, yay? We got a lot of stuff to talk about. Uh, but yes, this is Anime Church. We fuck up. Also, if you're cosplaying, Welcome. Uh, we encourage cosplay. Always, always encourage cosplay. You are welcome to freely cosplay in the, um, I would say audience, but I guess that's not the right term. In the congregation, you are welcome to sit in the pews in your cosplay. Cosplay welcome. E. Also, I want to go ahead and point out that, yes, if you're going to be in the area at the end of June, I did go ahead and do it. I was peer I was peer pressured into this decision. Peer pressure, peer I want to let it pressure. be known. I want to let it be known against duress. Or I'm sorry, under duress. Chucklehead one and two over here. Hi, I'm two. Yeah. Uh, under their under their guidance, I have submitted an anime church panel to a KaiCon. Yeah. And uh, to make it even better, I do have a copy of Pokemon Legend Arceus that he can bring with him to the panel. Just please don't lose it, you know, or you'll feel I bad. I didn't lose it when I brought mine to you'll, uh, You anyone. won't. You'll feel bad. I won't because I don't play it. But, like, you'll feel bad and you'll feel like you owe me for that. And I will make you pay me back. And then I'll spend it. I mean, on, like, like, if you just leave <sighs> the disc out of it and I just take the box, it won't be so bad. No, no. I want you to reimburse me because I'm looking forward to hookers and blow. You don't need me to get hookers and blow. No, but no, I need the money. But I need the money with for hookers it. and blow. Yeah, I'll do. I'll. 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 I'll, I'll, I'll make my own Arceus game blade. with hookers and blackjack. <laughs> <laughs> don't forget the game. <laughs> anyway, uh, good times. So we're dumb like that. Yeah, you're. If you're like, what kind of church is this? Very much that kind of church. So. What's church? We're the honest <laughs> church. <laughs> like, let's be honest. Very. Yeah, we're very honest. Uh, but Listen, yeah, we're I will tell church. you that the God we <laughs> worship is not real, but you know what? We're, we're honest about cool. it. We're honest about it. And when we ask for your money, we're up front with it. We're like, hey, we're going to use this for stuff that you're not comfortable with. Mm-hmm. Yes. And some stuff you might be comfortable with. And some stuff that you might highly judge. encourage. I mean, hey. Yeah. There, there's no kink shaming at this church. We don't kink shame. Also, stuff. also the reason we encourage cosplay is because we're not here to group up once a week to judge clothing. Unless well, there's a cosplay. We are, but in the no, good no, no, way. no, 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 no,
We're not. We don't gather once a week to judge clothing unless there's a cosplay contest. Exactly. Mm. That's why. Yeah, 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 so yeah, which yeah. case? No, no. But that doesn't happen every the judges. week. Then that kind of have no choice. That that doesn't. But but to be fair, we judge the judges. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Harshly. Harshly. Yes. We are very. Even if it's ourselves, we look in the mirror and we're just like. Oh, I don't have a high asshole. opinion of myself. I don't have a high opinion of ourselves. I don't think any of us have a high opinion of ourselves. God no. <laughs> Welcome to Fat Dog. We have self esteem issues. <laughs> and technical difficulties. And technical every difficulties. Every stream. Every stream. Oh, flapjacks. Every stream. I like flapjacks. All right. So, quick updates on projects. Uh, happy to announce that casting and recording has officially been done on the project that we're finally going to announce Solo Leveling Abridged. Whoa! That is actually happening. It's a real thing. It's it's mm-hmm. in the. I talked to Tony. I talked to Cody, and I was like, "Dude, we have to announce this. We have to publicly announce that this is happening." It's weird that we're announcing it on Anime Church. We should be announcing it elsewhere, but we definitely need to announce it to be like, "Hey guys, this is happening. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're in production now. We should probably talk about it and not be like it's secret." Like, I mean, yeah. to be fair, all three of us are in it. Also, let's mm-hmm. be honest, no one really watches Anime Church, so this is the best place to announce it. Exactly. Yeah. So Kinda? to the to the yeah, five of you that watch this, surprised. you now are in on the secret. All right. I'm hoping so. There there was someone when I went to get food today with a, a friend a really good person I know. Um mm-hmm. uh we mm-hmm. talked to someone who who kind of knew eyebrow about the, uh, slime abridged. It was nice. Do well. Oh yeah. Hey, eyebrow waggle. Eyebrow waggle yeah. and really good friend. Mm-hmm. All right, anyway. Okay, Groucho, yeah. calm down. <laughs> Listen, I don't know what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. I shot a lion in my pajamas. How he got in my pajamas, <laughs> I'll never understand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know enough about the Marx Brothers, but if you want to start going off of uh, uh, whatever it's called. Groucho Marx? The Three Stooges. Okay, there you go. I got you. <laughs> 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 All right, anyway, the boys. Anyway, uh, so uh, update on Slime 9. Uh, was hoping to have it out yesterday. Looks like it's going to be today because uh, <laughs> Calvin worked himself to sleep. That's what happened. happened. Uh, he, sent me, he sent me a version that was uh, 0.2% left to get done and then promptly passed the hell out. That's how it, yeah, point two. That's all that was left. There was a little bit of mixing left to do on the credit song. And then uh, we needed to add some text to the very, very end. And that's all that had to happen. Oh, and he needed to send me the Patreon version because he sent me the YouTube version. <laughs> I, mean, I can't blame him. Yeah. I, mean, he, I had 30 minutes of sleep between Friday and Saturday. He sent me that. He sent me that. And then there's also going to be two versions of the audio uh, of the song, the audio only version of the song. There's going to be a part with Steve the Direwolf and a part without Steve the Direwolf. We're oh, going to send. A, no, 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 no. We had to use Steve the Direwolf to cover up a part where um, somebody said a name wrong. Ooh. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And we could not get it fixed in time. That was another thing. Like, there were small things that we were like, well, I guess we're going to have to release it this way. Let's use Steve. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was kind of that way, but we, the yeah, perfect cover up. we use Steve at the end and yes, yes, of course, guys, if we use Steve, we're going to have to tell him to shut the fuck up. You're just going to have to wait and find out when and where. All right. Uh, <laughs> and how somebody tells Steve to shut the fuck up. It's beautiful. You're going to love I'm it. I'm still waiting for the time when somebody says that and Steve just like bites back like, fine, I'm going home. Yeah. But here's the really fun and interesting part. These sons of bitches in this call right here with me, they actually get to see the part that's 99.8% done right after this call. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They get to see it. They get to... Now, the the the, the other reason why it was 99.8% done is I realized I hadn't sent him the file of the final version of the credits, which was like the, uh, the, the video that I had put together that had the credits on one side, the video on the other, and it was like all great film grain and black and white and everything so we could get around copyright uh so that which is hilarious mm-hmm. considering that it's an abridged episode that's actually used but i mean that's what we did with the credits so we could technically use the credits and be safe 
But yeah, um, it is what it is. We had fun. Good times. Next. So I abridged a spider. So what? It's now officially in the editing phase. The lines have been cleaned. Uh, dialogue has been given. Uh, our lovely uh, editor Explodacy is going to be working on the stuff for that because it's not very long. It is a short, short script. It's a very short script. Not a lot. And to make his life easier, I took the eight episodes that there are little snippets that I want to grab from. I cut the specific s scenes, not not the sh not the shots I wanted, the scenes that those shots are from, so we'd have more to play with. I cut those mm. scenes out. I sent those scenes to him, so there's only thirteen scenes in total. Some of them are like eight minutes long. Some of them are like maybe a minute. Wow. If that, some of them are about like 20 seconds. So, so it, it, some can be a lot. So he has a lot of footage to use that he might not even need, but he's got a lot there to work with. And it's not a very long thing. It's a two page script. It's, but it's the most ADHD script I've ever written. And it was so easy <laughs> to write because <laughs> I'm like, oh, so just write like I think. Great. <laughs> it's the easiest thing ever. I love writing ADHD very disjointed characters. And very no, disconnected. no, not. Di Here's the thing. No, no, no. If you think ADHD people have a disjointed thought process, you could not be more wrong. Their thought process what? is not disjointed. Their speaking process is what's disjointed because that's yeah that's more accurate they're speaking because, because, because the connections time. happen in the brain the co all the connections are happening in the brain they just don't say aloud everything they're thinking dear god if you found an adhd person that says everything they're thinking out loud with no filter oh my god it would be weird that is the so, that is the song that never ends <laughs> If ever any of you have ADHD friends and you wonder why it is they'll sit there with one conversation and then suddenly like, oh, hey, what about this thing that's completely different to you guys? It's like, no, there was a connective through line. I've had to have, like, the funny thing is somebody's like, how did you get from here to here? Ten minutes of explaining later. And they're like, that's how? And I'm like, look, it yep. was faster in my head. It took all of mm -hmm. three seconds. Fuck you. <laughs> Because it's just why here. Here's the thing. I I have literally looked at a person after a ten minute conversation of explaining how I got from point A to point B and and looked them in the face and go, why did that take ten minutes to explain? And they're like, hmm. I don't know. And I go, stop being dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Think it, like me. It took three seconds. Don't be stupid. <laughs> Granted, I was eight years old, but still, <laughs> and I did not understand that everybody was slower than me. Like, and I don't mean like, like stupid, but like their brains didn't work as quickly. And I mm -hmm. did not understand that concept. I was like, why are you so dumb? You know, cause we don't have a frame of reference for that. Okay. So spider is being worked on. Lastly, last major updates on stuff that hasn't already been announced. Uh, well, you know what? This one has been announced, but I'm going to go ahead and talk about it. Um, the script for shield four is out. They have begun some recording and they've got some casting to do. So I really hope you guys are looking forward to that. We're excited about that. Apparently I get to play a character that does not die. Woohoo! A first. Whoa. <laughs> I know. Right. I'm, <laughs> Tony's, I'm concerned. Tony's not going to kill me. <laughs> yet. Uh, Put a yet, big yet, on yet, yet, big yet. All right. Uh, last but not least. Officially, as of last night, Konosuba's script is done. If you are a patron, you can take a look at a piece, a little preview of the Konosuba abridged one shot up on our Patreon right now. It is not hidden behind any tears. Yes, it is paywalled off. You can't look at my script for free. I'm not giving it up for free. You have to actually be a patron, but it's free for, it's available for, it's not free. It's available for everybody from the $1 tier all the way up to our executive producers. It is all of that. So if you would like to look at a very funny scene, I'm going to go ahead and tell you what scene specifically it is. If everybody remembers the lake scene, 
in Konosuba <laughs> with the alligators and the cage. Yep. I bet you can't wait to see what I did with that scene. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's going to be good. All right. So uh, to be fair, to be fair, this whole thing has been looked over by Moon, by Sonic, and by Cody. And Sonic and Cody are, I'm sorry, but uh, Cody has already looked over the entire script. I want Moon and Sonic to look over the mo- to the last scene that I wrote, even though I'm like, it's good. It's perfect. I love it. But I want you to see the Destroyer scene because I only did the... F- technically the first half of the destroyer scene but it's absolutely mm-hmm. great i love it because i actually sat down and i watched the episode and i was like yeah i'm not using this oh we absolutely have to do this no i'm not using this and then when it goes like when it drops and everything i'm like yeah we're not doing the self-destruct nonsense we're cutting that no like, fuck that like i i sat here and was like yeah this is nice and all but no because <laughs> like, it, it doesn't work with the story that we're telling but also it's like it's abridged I can cut out what I want. This is unnecessary stuff, and I can tell the story that I want to tell. So, uh, when you see what we have set up there, and like some of the jokes that we've been making throughout the series, and how they pay off towards the end, it's great. Uh, I-, I will give you guys this one little bit. Kazuma absolutely refuses, outright refuses to call Megamin by her name, so he always calls her a different insult. And it has, it always has something to do with like flaming red hots or habanero or some shit. Like it has something to do with like spicy, the color red and like the fact that she's always like causing trouble, you know, it's great. Like we, I sat down because uh, I very much like I'll write a script and then I'll look over it so much that I don't know if it's good anymore. So I'll get outside thoughts and they're like, no, this is funny. Shut up. Can I say something real quick? Go for it. Go for it. Yeah. You just described my ideal woman. (laughs) The flaming hot jalapeno on a steak. (laughs) Flaming hot redhead that likes to get into trouble. Flaming hot redhead. Yeah. The the flaming hot habanero with a steak. (laughs) Slow down there, red hots. Dude, the amount of insults. The the, uh, no, no, no. She's underage. That's right. Yeah, yeah. I was very careful about that because Megamin is underage. That is fair. I I keep forgetting that with how many people fucking sent over her. And and also, guys, at the same time, I released a super secret special surprise over on Patreon, and this had nothing to do. This had nothing to do with our recent, most recent abridge announcement that I talked about at the beginning. Uh, but there is a special necromance dance that I dropped on. The- <laughs> there is a special necromance dance that I posted on the Patreon. So if you'd like to see that. I, and to be fair, the Patreon post, the like text post that I made is absolutely 100% truthful. I let the intrusive thoughts win. That is literally what happened. And guys, please understand, this is going to continue happening. I'm going to continue posting shit on Patreon that is literally me- letting my intrusive thoughts win. Such as, the, and, and they will have no frame of reference to anything we're working on in the abridged. Such as, 100%, this is happening now, I am going to have a shot of I from the first episode of Oshinoko, Mike in hand, mm. happily standing there in a singing pose. It looks like she's singing, and then you're going to hear, Wadi Wadi Wa Megamin! And I'm like, God damn, because it's the same voice actress! Awesome. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm going to let her do the whole spiel in her whole singing thing. It's going to be great. And then we cut to the babies and they're just rocking out. And it's like, yeah, Megamin's kids know who they are. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if if I could do one thing, I would literally just ask Ray to replace the, uh, to replace the freaking glow sticks with like Megamin's staff, like tiny versions of Megamin's staffs. That would be it. That would be all I need in life. <laughs> Can we just do that? Can we just do that? All right. I like these intrusive thoughts. They are great. Uh, some other small changes are being made. Uh, but yeah, there's 
there's like good stuff. We're working on stuff behind the scenes to make Fat Dog better. So for those of you who were talking about specific things and had concerns, please, if you have concerns about things and the way that they are, we have an effing suggestion box. Please use it. We have a suggestion box on Discord. Please, please use it. Okay? Please. It's there. Use it. That's Speaking of which, uh, Discord, link in the description. Yes! Thank you for that. Uh, let's see. Lastly, That's why I'm uh, here. okay. Lastly, other things, uh, pretty soon we're going to be opening up an Instagram and we're going to be getting active on TikTok again. Uh, but we are going to have to make an amendment to our shorts. We're going to have to move subtitles around and change the font style because, uh, we learned some things from a marketing person recently that are going to help to improve how we do things moving forward with shorts. And like, I think it's Instagram reels. Is that what they're called? And our TikTok videos. So uh, uh, we're trying Instagram to, reels. yeah, Instagram reels. I I've never used Instagram, so I don't know about that stuff. Also, don't you can't can you post stuff on Instagram from your computer or is it phone only? I, mm. That's a good question, man. Yeah, it's a very good question. Yeah, you're the you're the uh, you're the Gen Z you're, person here. Yeah, this is your this is more your milieu. Yeah, you and your Tic Tacs. Yeah, yeah, let me go to fucking... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, question for the audience then. We've got to get to the news. All right, so first off, before we get to the news, as I called it, uh, we've got to do anime reviews. Guys, we had more meetings this time in Slime, but these are good meetings. If we knew this was coming, or at least Moon and I knew this was coming. Yeah. Because we read the light novel. Yeah, so Fenris, I kind of jumped, Fenris? I jumped in at 16. Fenris, as the non-light novel person in this particular thing, what'd you think of it? To be fair, to be fair, I'm very happy. I'm very happy knowing that Slime 9 is coming out after this episode because they talked about the Angels and the Tenma War, and I forgot that I brought that up in Slime 9. I was like, oh, the Angels. Oh, yeah, shit. I was kind of, yeah, you don't learn about that until season three. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm surprised that they referenced something in the book we just started last Monday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was well, not no, no, expecting okay. that. No, no, no. This isn't the Tenma War. This is not the same no, the, thing. I was talking about the angels. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, like, angels showed up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, the coincidence is abound that the angels, like, we start getting the angels being active in the book on the same week that they mention the angels in the anime and then also in the same week that I mentioned the angels in the upcoming uh, Slime 9 episode that should be coming out soon. You're just excited to see the Hinata fight for sure? Oh, bro. If you think you're excited, all I've got to go off of it, all we've got to go off of it is basically the light novels. Because I'm not really, what I don't remember the manga. They have to go off of it. Is the light novels. I, I don't, uh, I forget which way. Short answer. Out. Yes, you can upload to Instagram from your computer. Yes, thank you. Thank you for that piece of information. All right. Back to slime. But yes, uh, diplomacy, it sucks. I can't wait for the brother to realize how much he's going to fuck up. No. <laughs> moon, moon, he's moon. We know. Sure. Moon, we know things. You guys know. I, I saw that he's smile and that and when he was told he was going to take over. I'm like, oh, oh, this oh fucker's different brother. Different brother. Yeah, uh, okay. Falmouth. Okay, Falmouth. Falmouth. I thought you were talking about. I thought you were talking about Luis for a second. I was like, Oh, oh no, no, him too. But that's beside the point. Um, I was more referencing the Falmouth. I can. Cause... I could drop a thing. I could drop a thing on you, but it wouldn't be as fun if I told you. I'm fully expecting him to get completely and utterly killed by Diablo. What the twin? Folded. No, no, no. The twin vampires. <laughs> not not Falmouth. Not Falmouth. It's not like major spoiler. It doesn't mean anything. The the twin vampire things. Roy and Luis. The yep. the. Uh, the uh, the Pope and the um, Demon Lord and the Demon Lord, they weren't originally brothers, or they weren't originally twins. They were one being, and Luminous split them apart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the funny thing is, if one of them dies, guess what happens? The other one uh, regains the other half. All that power goes back to the other one. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's yeah. now much stronger. <laughs> he is now much stronger. So if you fuck with Luminous, it's now a problem. Those clowns yeah. fucked about, the and thing. now they're gonna find Here's the dudes. thing. All right, so the the major concern that everybody the the major concern that everybody's having. By the way, the manga right now is only at the end of season three. That's where the manga is. Like literally. Okay, Moon, you're gonna like this because when I reference it, you'll know exactly where they are. All right, gay, and the rest of the crew are running are are running through the dungeon. Like literally, they just did the uh, the preliminary showing off of the dungeon at the end of the Founders Festival. So like the awesome. Coliseum stuff has finished, but I didn't realize because from the light novel, I didn't realize that where they were showing everything, all of them are still gathered in the Coliseum, and the big screens are showing the Coliseum viewers what's going on in the dungeon. So like everybody's mm-hmm. doing the dungeon crawl. And we're about they we got about halfway yeah, through the dungeon. So I thought, yeah, the way the book kind of explains it, I thought they were all like at the entrance of the dungeon. And I thought that too. I thought that too. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna interrupt you guys real quick. I just mm-hmm. got a notification from Bookwalker that Kodacha titles are ninety percent off. <laughs> okay, how long does that last? Including lasting? slime that ends on the twenty second. Guys, guys, go, go get slime books right now. Here's what's even crazier. A new volume of slime is coming out, is out already. The most expensive slime novel I'm seeing right now is $6.99. Volume 18 should be out right now. Check. Uh, this is, okay. The everything story I've seen right now is manga. Uh, Red River and Drown, Drown the, the Whole World. world. Yeah, yeah. You know, while she looks so sad in photographs, I absolutely love her. I absolutely when she love smiles. Her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oreo. Anyway. <laughs> what should we call this cookie? That's brilliant. That's brilliant. Um, All right. anyway. Volume 18 releases on Bookwalker in two days. Nice. Guys. Guys, if you have not gone and done that, go over to Bookwalker and purchase that. And and it is when sorry, you do. You do let, me, let me rephrase this. It's the fat manga. It's the manga. That's oh, it's on the sale. manga that's on sale, not the light novels. Uh, uh, so cool. But, but still, you know what? Either way, when you do, what should they do, Fenris? They should email Bookwalker and tell them that we sent you, so that way we can get a better chance at a sponsorship. Also, a a, a review would not go and, amiss and letting them yes. know in your review that we sent you because this helps us get a sponsorship with them, which would be phenomenally helpful. Amazing. Yeah. And uh, Bookwalker does something I've never seen from any other um, online book site. They will let you purchase the first up to five volumes of any manga for free. This is an incredible deal guys. So, like, and we're I, not even sponsored it, by them, and we're telling you that. That's that's yeah. how you know this is insane. Yeah. Yesterday, like, I, we're giving I you this information bought, for free. I bought forty volumes of manga, or sorry, forty chapters of manga through Bookwalker. Didn't pay a single cent. Wow. All right. Uh, nice. So back to back to the episode of slime. We got to get back into anime before manga. Uh, so this anime was this anime episode was a lot of meetings, a lot of. Pe- uh, political dealings, yeah, but political this dealings has very uh, important. This has very important ramifications on on events uh, soon to it's happen. Going to be like this for what the next three episodes? Mm, not necessarily. Not I, necessarily. I know. Well, I remember the meetings and stuff took out like a book the first half. half of the manga. The first half of the book. The first half of the book is like set up. And here's the thing: if you don't like set up. What the fuck are you doing? Because that is literally slime. Slime is yeah. set up, payoff, set up, payoff, set up, payoff. That's how it's season one went. That was how. Wait for it. Wait for it. Yeah, that's how season one went. That's how season two went. That's how season three is gonna go. Though to be fair, a lot of season three, especially the latter half of season three, holy crap. Yeah. Oh, it's going the latter good. half of season it's three. The latter half of season three is not hype, hype, hype. It's fun, fun, fun. But we there is some the hype, hype in it right now. There, you're in the hype phase. This is the hype phase. The latter half mm-hmm. of season three is fun, with the exception of the dungeon. The dungeon is the hype phase, just because of how mm-hmm. mind blowing and game changing 
everything becomes when the dungeon starts. Like, I'm not going to lie. Ramirez is the most broken, overpowered thing that has ever happened to Tempest. And you'll find out why. Like, Mm -hmm. everybody's like, oh, man, making friends with Milam was the most important thing to ever happen to Tempest. It was like, no, that was really important. Not the most important. (laughs) Veldora, not the most important. Well, second most. Veldora is the second most important. Ramirez is the Mm -hmm. first. Ramirez is the second best, is the first best ally. Second best is Veldora. Third best is Diablo. Fourth best is Milam. Mm -hmm. If you don't know why, pick up the light novels from Bookwalker. Write a review. Make sure you put us in that review. Let them know we sent you. Pretty, pretty, please. please. (laughs) Yes, please. (laughs) All right. Uh, Also, also, on a side note, to touch on the next anime that we're going to do. Hold on. Edward. We were talking about Edward, the brother, and how he had that big-ass smile. Oh, boy. Mm. I'm so glad they showed that smile. I'm so glad they showed that smile because now everybody knows Yeah, we hate this guy, and we can't wait to see him get his comeuppance. And oh boy, we don't have to wait long for that one. And and I'm gonna I'm gonna without spoilers, guys. I'm going to tell you right now. Don't worry if some of your favorite characters in this series have not been getting enough screen time. It's not just a battle. Everybody's gonna get a chance to strut their stuff again. You're gonna get Hakuro time. Like, all right, I get it. I get it. Ranga didn't have a chance to strut his stuff much in season two. Don't you worry. Don't you worry. Ranga's gonna get a brand new chew toy. <laughs> <laughs> Ranga Ranga's gonna have a, a nice battle. It's gonna feel like uh it's gonna feel uh all right. So this time it's going to feel a little bit more like the Orc War. Remember when everybody had a thing to do in the Orc War? Everybody had like a big thing. Hakuro had a thing. Like all your favorite characters had a moment in the Orc War. It's going to kind of feel like that again. That's the most I can say. Everybody is going to have a chance to shine. So at some point, one of your favorite characters is going to have a moment where they just get to just be a standout and be a badass. And you're going to be like... That's my, you'll have that Leonardo DiCaprio, hey, moment, that, that, uh, meme moment. You're basically there to do that. And, uh, mm-hmm. you'll, you'll have that moment. So rest assured, keep watching Slime Season 3. You are going to enjoy what you get. I don't want to spoil anything. I want you guys to just rest assured that if you have a favorite character in the series, they will get a good moment where you will be proud of that character and you will be happy and you will be satisfied with (sighs) that moment that they get. Everybody's going to get a good moment. At least out of the main crew. Not everybody in the background is going to get that. I will say this. Rigard, probably not so much. He is the he stays at home and oversees Tempest. He oversees the city of Rimuru. That is his job. Like, his primary job is overseeing the day-to-day affairs. He's not he's not part of the fighting force, even though he kind of wants to be. He is the mm-hmm. administrative side of things. So, if uh, you were hoping to see that. Also, he's got to run a wrestling troupe, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Anyhow. So, uh, to comment on uh, what Lunum Roger posted <laughs> in chat, Millum is basically the cinnamon bun of the world. Pissing off Millum would put you in the bad graces of the rest of the demon lords, most likely. I would say that is true. <laughs> uh, I would just equate uh, Millum more to uh, Mousy. Yeah. Yeah. You piss off Mousy, you piss off the world. You. Mm. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm sorry. I read the cinnamon bun. Is... My first thought was cinnamon roll. Cinema roll, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Cinema roll. Uh, that's funny. That's very funny. Now, now oh. you're making me want to figure out who's gonna. Be... Oh my god! I still want to know if Connor bought her that car. Yeah. Gee Crimson is Connor. Yes. <gasps> yes. Yes. <laughs> every oh, time that would make too much. Every sense. time, every time she sees the cinnamon roll, Gee! What? <laughs> Buy it for me? No. Buy it Look, Millum, for me. I can't just buy you everything. Or buy you anything. No, any cinema roll anytime you want. Velzard. Buy it for her. <laughs> it's not you too. She is precious. You owe her. Buy it for her. 
Bowser is definitely Chris. <laughs> Chris. Oh, <laughs> uh, it she will work better. out, but I think it would be funny if we could get um I forgot their names. Blue and green. If we could get them to be uh, uh Giga and, Rain? Uh uh R Misery and Rain? Yeah, if we could get them to be Giga The and, Trash uh, Taste uh, oh, The Trash Taste Boys? Yeah, just the yeah. Trash Taste. Yeah. <laughs> There's no would way we can get hilarious? away with that. There is absolutely oh. no way we can pull that off. Oh, I know, but it would be so funny. Rimuru is the one who owns the plushie company? Oh, no. Oh, no. That would make too much sense. Oh, my God. Because now, now you've made it, you've, you've made it where I'm like, okay, so the world ends, but Iron Mouse is now trapped in Milam's body. So Rimuru start it in order to make it where she doesn't go crazy. Ruby makes her cinema rolls, but he also has data of all these other personalities that he puts into some of his quote unquote friends. So now Gee Crimson mm -hmm. is Connor. That gives a whole Rain. new meaning to the mouse tax. <laughs> <laughs> Misery, misery and rain. Misery and rain are now <laughs> Garnt and Joey. Yep. I, I honestly and want Felser to know how much Chris. this would cost because I I would save and I would pay for this. All right, so we so need funny. we need to raise we need to raise uh, quite a bit. Of, we need to have a donothon to to get mm. to get everybody in here, but we do it like we. I, so this is this is season two stuff right here. It, it depends on how much they would they would charge, to be honest, because yeah, yeah. I mean, I would one hundred percent, I would one hundred percent ask Scott how much Connor is, how much it costs Connor, because they had him on. Do it, mm -hmm. yeah, do it. May as well. Well, I, it's not going to happen anytime soon. We have to actually get into no, season two are. of Slime. Yeah, I mean, do better to fucking it was hard ask now and one. have everything put out in advance. Throw me a figure, uh, because now we're that talking gives about us time to fund because raise because and now now aside. we have to pay the mouse tax. Mm -hmm. I oh, have no does issue that mean with we this. We have to buy her cinema rolls. Yes, I have no <gasps> issue with this. I'll help Connor buy the car for her. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh, god. I will. Uh, no, no, no. Better yet, we will send a Rimuru. We will send a Rimuru in a cinema roll. <gasps> yes. Rima, all right. I all right. <laughs> Here is my offer. We send the meme to to Iron Mouse. I I give you cinema roll, Rimuru. You supply voiceover for our bridge series at a later date. Oh, that would be great. <laughs> or or Rimuru for cinema rolls. Yeah, we send her just the Rimuru and the meme first. I'd be like, you will receive the cinema rolls. No, 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 no. I'm, I, I, I'm good on my word. I'm like, no, no, no. Four cinema rolls. Then we will, we will schedule this stuff. It's like, who am I playing? <laughs> Send the picture of Milam. <gasps> yeah, you're uh, welcome. Perfect you're a demon story. lord, bitch. <laughs> like, basically, basically, anime you. <laughs> like, like literal yeah. anime you. <laughs> May as well be. Mouse deserves it, honestly. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. one hundred percent, dude. Like, uh, you know, you know what's even funnier? Like, like her whole thing. We get to season three where they're doing the whole thing and th and they're drinking and everything. She gets drunk and just starts going on a rant about Common Rider. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'd be great. Meanwhile, 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 the entire time, meanwhile, the entire time. Uh, Connor is gee is just like I bet Booby doesn't have to deal with this bullshit. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I, I'm making notes of this just just to let you know. Fuck. Sorry, Scott. You've been replaced. I'll find another character for you. I was originally gonna see if we could cast Scott as Geek Crimson, and now I want Connor. This is terrible. Look what you guys have done. Oh, I blame you for this, Lumen. You and your good ass ideas. <laughs> oh man. Mm, all right. So anyway, back to back to back to slime. Uh, yeah. Oh, he could be uh, one of the other demon lords. Uh, what's his name? Which one's the one that sleeps? 
No, 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 no. He cannot. He cannot be Dino. Okay. What about the giant? Because the Dino is the angel. Oh yeah. 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 But what about the giant? Dagrel. Yeah. <laughs> you want to do the funniest thing possible? Mm. <laughs> Scott voice is luminous. Yes. <laughs> that a good word. Or or he voices Louie. The vampire that gets offed by uh, Footman? Or, 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 I'm sorry, not Footman, the other one. No, Isn't it Footman? Uh, uh, oh, no, I uh, did say it. Here, Footman. It wasn't it's Footman. Lapless. Uh, Lapless. Yeah, Lapless. That one, yeah. He gets, he gets, uh, he gets off by Lapless. He, he voices that, but like every time he enters a word, uh, enters a room, Louie, Louie. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we gotta go. I was so dumb. Anyway, you should be paying me at this point. No! How dare you? You're not writing the script. I'm writing the script. You throw out Give one idea ideas. and I roll with... Yeah, yeah. You threw out and I... Like, here's the, here's much, the funny sorry. thing. Here's the funny thing. I can't tell you why that idea sparked more creative stuff, but basically, you're not throwing out a new idea. I'd already considered that idea. But, well, I consider that idea similar. You have no <laughs> idea how close you got to an idea that already existed in my brain. To be fair, Richie, <laughs> and that I'd already uh, talked Lun- about out loud. Lunum mm-hmm. just said a sentence about Millum being a cinnamon roll. Yeah, I clarified it as mousy, and then ideas from all of us took over. Well, to be yeah. fair, to be fair, it got it got way way worse because <laughs> I you pounced on an idea that was already kind of something that had been kicked around the office. Oh, yeah. And that we and that we kind of already shot down, but now like you made it more, like you brought the idea back into fruition and you made it seem more possible. Made and, like, it better. Hey, you made it better. And uh, no, now and then you said you would fund it. I would. Help you said fund you it, guys. Yeah. You guys said you would fund it, which makes it even more possible. So now I'm like, well, shit. Yeah. All right, so we're going to have a donothon to try and raise the money to hire Mouse and Connor and Garnt and Joey to and do our, to and... voice in our bris- No, Garnt is Gigak. Oh, I did not mm-hmm. know that. That's his actual name. Garnt. Oh. Yeah, I just yeah. I could never remember their actual names. Don't don't take it too seriously. Oh no, I don't. I wasn't going to pay you anyway. <laughs> don't worry. Anyhow. We don't do anything too seriously here. Okay. Mashoku Tensei. Word but be- to- be- before we get into that, did you know they're releasing a game for it later this year? Sure. For Michoku Tensei? Yeah. Is it on mobile? Uh, no. It's okay, going to be cool. on huh? PlayStation, Switch, and PC via Steam. Nice. Interesting. Uh, okay. Michoku Tensei, here's your word of warning. Do not watch the opening. That is all. It is filled with spoiler. And specifically spoiler for the end of this season. Oh, we got Revan who says he's going to join in. Shut up and take my money. God damn it. <laughs> All right. It's because we talked about Mouse and the boys. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's so. What do we? It's like, I love that instead of calling it the Octograms, what do we name this? Mouse and her minions? Done. No, no. Yeah. We cannot be. We cannot be. Chris, I kind of like it. Hmm. <laughs> Guy just turns his head. Guy turns his head and you hear. <laughs> like, like we forcibly turn the head. It looks so unnatural. No. I mean, I mean, is donate to an abridged if y'all get mousy. <laughs> uh, you, you donate to. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. It's not, dude. We're uh, we're gonna have to have donothons for different projects at this point. It's mm-hmm. not. It's just a question of what episode is that gonna happen. And yes, we want to. It's not just to get her in. We want. We're gonna have to get others in too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Anyhow, but skip the opening. Yes, skip the opening. Spoilers abound and spoilers for the end of the season. Do not spoil yourself. Watch the OP at the end and then it'll make sense. Because once you know and then you see, you're like, holy shit, they really did spoil. Like a massive plot point. Yeah, 
Mm. Yeah, I they did. Learned in recent uh, recent years that the openings have spoiled a lot of various shows, so I oh, just yeah. skip them in general right now. Unless it was Oshinoko. I will because, say, God damn, I that song was amazing. Watch it because while the song was playing, I was like, "This is the perfect time to put on the suit." So <laughs> I just let it play. I kept the headphones on. Started putting the suit on. Well, I had to go. I, I had to go and warn on. reactors to skip the episode. Uh, Op. At the end, because of that, the beginning. Yeah. at the beginning, I had to go and warn them, hey, skip this. All right. So we're back in wholesome territory. Also, guys, did you know, uh, even though he's only had like some mild training and he's done like a, a couple of fights with Rejard, uh, And yes, he does have the demon eye, technically. Did you realize that Rudy was that competent with a sword? Uh, him being Paul's son, the fact that Paul trained him. Uh, no, no, no. Years, yeah. Paul, Paul wasn't that good at training. Paul was a shit teacher. No, 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 no. Most of that teaching, 100% came from uh, Ghislaine. That was Ghislaine talking right there. Also, mm -hmm. I just want to point this out for as good, for, for as awesome as he looks and everything. Uh, uh, what's his name? The, the other guy? Luke? Luke, not actually that good of a sword fighter. Hmm. Like his his skill at sword, like he's he's only um, like upset cool. talking about Mushoku Tensei. Huh? Reading chat. Oh. Oh yeah, we're talking about Mushoku Tensei. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Luke was not that good with a sword. Those are by the way, Mushoku Tensei and Slime are the two shows that we're reviewing before we get to the actual like news news. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, um, for the long-standing viewers, we we do this what every couple of months when something we're excited about comes up. Like uh, mm -hmm. the start, I think it started with The Last of Us, and then we started with Oshinoko, and now yeah. here we are with Mashoku Tensei and Slime. Yeah, we didn't necessarily have a show last uh, last no, season. We, we which... did. There wasn't no, really no. anything that excited all of us too terribly much. I mean, there yeah. was stuff, but like I was like. Ugh. A lot of it was like season two stuff, and I didn't want to make everybody have to go and watch season one just to get into it. Because okay. the, okay, okay. the most me, exciting me... show last, the most exciting exciting one uh, last season was probably Jujutsu Kaisen. But okay, you let... have to watch all watch of season, season two. Or, 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 oh no, I take that back. I take that back. Apothecary Diaries. Okay, let, let me rephrase that. Uh, a show that all three of us are excited about. Yeah, Apothecary Diaries or Free Run were like some of the are two of the best, and they started in the fall. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Also, Arb Knight is right. Rudy was a very thirsty boy this episode. Very. Yeah. Although, can you blame him? He has a wife now, and like and everything's no, finally and, functioning and, again. And, and, so exactly. He heard the words, and he was just like, he, he, "No, it wasn't even words." Go, go, she laid his her head on him. He's just he's just like. And we're off to the races. My little Gundam exactly. has been activated. Time to fight the Zakus. <laughs> well, look, she just put her head that on her shoulder, said, with Guardian Levi Leviosa, and then it lifted. Put your head on my shoulder. Anyway. <laughs> oh. I'm a fire in my laser. <laughs> Blah, blah. <laughs> so, so yeah, uh, yeah. He was a thirsty boy, but this was this was still a wholesome episode because we got the wedding reception kind of thing. I liked this. Mm -hmm. Like there, I, I liked how their house started to feel more like a home. I love these little moments that we're getting with the shopping trip and everything. You're definitely getting more of these vibes of like, hey. It's nice to actually see these. And this is this is why I like Mishoku Tensei. Because everybody gets... I, I think everybody gets too wrapped up into, like, this anime vibe of, like, it's got to be all this action and stuff like that. And people keep bitching about, like, taking the downtime build-up times and slime. And it's like, well, we want to get to the hype. We want to get... Yeah, but the hype doesn't have a payoff if you don't have a lead-in. If you don't have build-up. <laughs> But what Mashoku Tensei, I think, excels at is, like, the point of this particular series is that it is it is literally telling the story of this character's life. And there are 
so many different aspects to a person's life. There are times where there's intense action happening in this character's life. There's amazing, wonderful suspense of magic and like unbelievably horny moments. Uh, there are moments that are filled with drama and suspense and, and heartache and heartbreak and people are going to misinterpret things and fuck up and there's going to be depression and, and there's going to be sadness and anxiety and like it's going to cover the gamut of all sorts of different things. And then you're just going to have these nice quiet moments where they're just spending time together, furnishing a house, which was something I didn't understand until recently. And now that I absolutely get this and I understand the price of like getting a house put together and shit. Even if it's just for one person, you know, I understand this in a way that I did not before when I was reading it. And now this hits so much harder and I'm, I'm so here for it. It's yeah, like, yeah, go for it. Sorry. Uh, to comment on what Upside Colton just put in, Mashuko Tensei feels more real than most anime. Yes. Yeah. It really does. It's real life, but in a way that keeps you engaged and, it's... uh, Best way I can describe these moments, even though I have a horrible feeling something's going to go down, because let, let's face starts, this: what once, does yeah, once it starts getting real good, life does. yeah, once it starts, once things um, start settling down, <laughs> for all the Doctor Who fans out there, Matt Smith won during the party. Um, what's the point in them being happy now if they're going to be sad later? The answer is, of course, because they're going to be sad later. Why not ha enjoy the happiness now while you can? The drunk giraffe! The drunk giraffe! Everybody do the drunk giraffe! So, yeah, it's... I know... I don't know what's gonna happen. I just know that something bad is gonna happen eventually here relatively soon. It's... Because that's what Mishoku Tensei does. It's... Because that's yeah, what it's... life does to us. Yeah. We get happy, we enjoy life, and then suddenly... Fucking life backhands us across the face. What is it? What is it that Ultron said? Every now and then, when things start to settle, God tosses a stone. Yeah. And in this anime, there's actually a literal god, the man god. Multiple. Yeah. Uh, well, there's only one left now. The dragon god uh, isn't an actual god. I'd, I'd still consider the dragon god more of a god than the man god, because that fucking asshole. Orsted isn't an actual god. Doesn't stop me from hating the man god, damn it. Have you read the whole series no. of all right, why do you no. hate the man god? I mean anime only, and the guy just plays too many fucking games, too goddamn He's creepy. Speaks in too many creepy. fucking gotcha. riddles. I want to beat the other ever love you fuck out of him. Here's here's the beautiful thing about Mashoku Tensei, right? Yes, it is an isekai, but like the way it is told, it covers more genres than most anime. Like you were literally in the slice of life arc right now. Then we had that just previously we had like kind of a depression adventurer arc. We literally were on our adventurer arc. Then we had the school arc. Before that, we had our typical adventurer arc of we got to we got to do all of our adventuring, got to get home kind of thing. And our typical before that, fantasy was adventure. Just the isekai. It was literally just the isekai arc before that. And like so there that's why this is such a beloved isekai this is such a beloved isekai and it's considered the godfather of isekai because it is an isekai that does all of the tropes it hits all of the tropes, but it does them so well with such precision. And the point is, you're not supposed to, like, really, really love Rudy. Like, oh, yes, he is our main protagonist. He is a creep. But, like, he's also, like, he's just a guy. He's and he's human. not, and he's not, like, he's not like these ultra virgin, uh, goody, goody guys that have, like, they earned their right to the other world. No, this dude was fucking like, this dude was an asshole. Got hit by a truck. <laughs> that was it. Only, and only redeeming quality he did was save two high schoolers. Three. Uh, three high schoolers from getting hit hit by said truck. And if you're if you're yeah. caught up with the anime, or at least if you're caught up to the end of last season, you know that one of said high schoolers is actually in the world with him right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But uh. To, to sum up a lot of what has been said, Mushoku Tensei is not just a story. It is a life. Yeah, it is the tale of Rudius Greyrat's life. 100%.
And the crazy part is we're only starting to get up to turning point two. Now, turning point two is a toughie. But that's not when everything changes. Turning point three is when everything changes. That's when the whole story dramatically shifts. Uh, that's when the Fire Nation decides to, to no. attack, right? And that won't be covered in the anime right now. That's okay. They'll probably put it in the live action. <laughs> the live action. Uh, but no, it won't be covered in the anime right now because the anime season two of the anime won't cover that far. If uh, most likely when Mashoku Tensei gets covered for uh, w- once it gets season three, season three mm-hmm. will cover turning point three. And when it does, buckle up, buckle up. All right, we're skipping ads. I'm not it, it, playing ads. Yeah, yeah. Lunam. Uh, Why can't I fucking talk today? Must Lunam. be this stuff. Um, it basically is door fortress game that took on a life of its own mm-hmm. yeah yeah all righty so now that we've covered the actual um the stuff up to now any final comments on this episode that was a nice bath by the way the, like they've got a big a, ass bath God, oh, yeah, i wish i had really a bathroom nice. like that that would be so nice <laughs> be nice to actually just spread out and enjoy myself mm-hmm. instead of being fucking cramped into a little fucking spot considering the technology of the world i'm also going to point this part out because it was way funnier to see in the anime and i was looking forward to this part like the moment when they told when he told nanahoshi uh that uh, she yeah, they had, have potato chips. They have potato chips. And like you can't see the mm-hmm. face, but you can hear. You can imply from the tone of voice. You're like, wait, you can what? Hear the and then, excitement. And then you see, you see just the hop, 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 hop. Mm-hmm. It's like <laughs> just mask. <nasty. laughs> yeah, yeah. She's going nuts over the potato chips, and then she's like, "Let me use your mm. bath because like, like Japanese person can use a bath like that." Holy shit! And I, I will say this mm. now for the viewers: we didn't touch on everything in this episode because there's so much more. There is a but lot. We need you to experience it. Batty Gaddy, <laughs> just oh, Batty yeah, Gaddy was general. great. I love how he. I love that character so much. The fact that he just like subtly helps Rudy in the worst, most inconvenient ways possible. Also, guys, we mm-hmm. do not. We one hundred percent do not want to spoil the episode for people who may not have watched the episode yet. We're gonna give our thoughts and opinions. I mean, on this. To be fair, the episode only like came it. out a couple hours ago. Yeah. Uh, and lastly, without going into spoilers about it, Elena Lise. A lot about her history is revealed. That was, that was precious. Yeah. Yeah. That whole thing. I knew that was coming. I knew this was the episode that that was going to happen. And I was like, I I can't wait to hear what your thoughts were on this without going into spoilers. Just what were your thoughts? I I haven't read any of the the light novels or read the manga. Uh I'm an anime only on this. I actually called it, like, last season. Oh, yeah, you did. That, and I, it was really fun to just sit there and be like, all right, yep, um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, just shut up. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I mean, I, Richie, the best thing you could have done is just be like, why do you think that? Is it just because she's an elf? Good. That would have been the best way to handle that. Uh, but I kind of, I kind of, uh, maybe. Like, I don't know. Mm. Maybe. I don't know what you're talking about. No, no, I'm not going to not going to clarify until next week. Oh, no, I don't know what you're talking about. But yeah, the whole mm-hmm. a little lease and uh, I almost said Lisa Anna, and I'm like, no, that's fairy tale. No, <laughs> yep, different person. <laughs> but yeah, a little lease was that was just so wonderful. I I was a little surprised because like I I didn't really think there was anything, and then she just started crying, and I was like, oh, oh no, and then. The question was asked, and I was like, oh. 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 Yeah. And as more things just got explained, it was just, it's just terrible. It's upsetting. That this kind of terrible, thing upsetting, but, but also, also heartwarming when you realize why. Mm-hmm. Uh, what, when you realize why the scene that started it all happened. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then we get to see uh, just... We're told her story, We, and I'm pretty sure it mirrors a similar story to what a lot of people in the real world have had to face. Yeah. Um, and it's, but yeah. it's painful, but it's touching to see that there is still... Such a good dynamic between like the this. two of them. 
Uh, it's just nice. I loved, I loved mm-hmm. that moment. But yeah, we mm-hmm. get some fun times next time. Uh, I will. <laughs> Uh, if you've even caught a hint of the opening or if you've even remotely seen the trailer, I'm going to go ahead and let you know. Uh, we're getting two new characters. or Rather, they're not exactly new, but we're getting two characters showing up next time. Uh, we're getting some new additions to the household. The sisters are mm. returning. That's next episode. So the household's going to get a little... Uh, just going off the title, the sisters will be returning. And somebody has to chaperone the girls. An old friend is stopping by. To chaperone the two girls. Just a mm-hmm. just a kind just a kind bald guy wearing a a nice little just a just a nice little headband around his around his forehead. Just a kind old bald dude. That's all. Maybe a scar so here and to, there. Just so happens to love the spear. Just so happens to have like a couple of figures of himself around the gray rat household. You mm-hmm. know, just a yeah, nice they, old. They may dude. have hit a dead end along the way but you know i'm pretty sure they'll make it it's sad that his Man, party hit, it's, right. it's really sad that his party got disbanded also sad that uh, yeah. one of them went missing uh no not missing mm. it's according to well, well hey we don't from know root, uh, from uh, the two well, other party members uh perspective no 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 no, no no one of them knows exactly yeah. where she is the other one's just a moron yeah i'll, I'll leave yeah. <laughs> you're not wrong one of the to be fair the, they didn't leave the best note <laughs> no they did not leave the best note but if you if you're assert, if you're referring to a certain red-haired vixen yeah uh the bald guy i think pretty much knows where it is, where she is and the other one the the moron is a moron mm. so we're gonna leave him be <laughs> but yeah uh by the title of that next listen, episode richie's already spoiled something for me i know things will work out with that later <laughs> three three you think he puts the three rings on one finger? Well, I mean, more door. Or does he put it on another appendage? <laughs> I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you. If they had lightsabers, if they had lightsabers in Lord of the Rings, they could have just destroyed Sauron's ring right there because it's hotter than the fires of Mount Doom. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. Definitely. Anyhow. Anyhow. <laughs> on to the actual news. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh yeah, by the way, number two actually uh number two actually shows up in season two. So number two is about to actually happen this season. So that's beautiful. Ooh. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yay. All right. Yes. So the news news. Blues clues news news. Oh god. I knew it. I knew there was no way we could get away with it. Uh no. All right. So I'm sorry, got... I follow Steve on so many social medias, and he is the most wholesome thing ever. All That's right, so, so we have the new Joker trailer. Guys, uh, what did you think of this? Um, I'm intrigued. Yeah. Lady Gaga as uh, uh Yeah, but we've Harley known about Quinn. that for a while. Interesting choice. Mm-hmm. Uh, y'all might have. I actually did not hear a whole lot about this. We talked um, about this. I and My memory is shit. Cl- clearly. Yeah, we've talked about yeah. this multiple times on Anime Church. Like, okay. But, I'm not yeah. the biggest. Um, uh, go ahead. Sorry, didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, you you go ahead. Also, since you uh, don't understand, I'm gonna go ahead and point out this is supposed to be a musical. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It, yeah. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of American superheroes, like I keep telling everybody every week. Mm-hmm. I'm interested in this, just because. I like the first. It movie, looks yeah. hilarious and phenomenal mm-hmm. and i will always side with the villains more than the heroes because most of the time the villains have more compelling backstories also i'm not 100 percent sure that this arthur fleck is in fact the one who actually goes on to be the joker in the batman universe this may be the one who inspires the joker i i can fully see that but <laughs> it's it's still still looks really and I want to watch it. And this is a different origin story for Harley Quinn, if that is the case. Just so you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's similar, but still very different. It's because uh, uh, the original story is that she was a psychiatrist at Arkham. At yeah, yeah psychiatrist at uh, Arkham. Arkham Asylum. In this, it looks like she's an inmate. Mm-hmm. And not so much an inmate, as much as a patient. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, 
But yeah, it, it seemed interesting. A little like I'm I'm not a hundred percent sold on this yet, but I'm gonna give it a fair shake just because I liked the first Joker. I thought it was really well done, and I'm interested to see where they go with this. <laughs> so yeah, we'll I mean, see. It it looks like it's a, like you mentioned, but again, it has musical elements. I'm interested just for the musical part. This is just this is just a teaser. Mm-hmm. We'll know more when an actual trailer comes out, and I'm I'm definitely looking forward to that. Like I I, I I'm intrigued. I want to know more. N- need to know more intensifies. <laughs> All right, so still, ah. still hoping for that uh, crossover. Moving on to our next one, when Krasinski meets Reynolds. So John Krasinski, uh, Mister Fantastic himself, uh, is making a movie with Ryan Reynolds about imaginary friends called If. And the final trailer dropped, and I was already going to go and watch this because it looked like a oh, lot yeah. of fun. It's Ryan Reynolds. And a, a, a precocious, to watch a, precocious a, a precocious and adorable kid dealing with imaginary friends and trying to find homes for all these imaginary friends. <laughs> and it just it just looks good. It just looks dang good, and I can't wait. It looks so heartwarming. <laughs> mm-hmm. And that's what we need in the world these days. Mm-hmm. Plus, I didn't realize that uh, John Krasinski actually wrote and directed it until oh, I yeah. tried, at the end of the trailer when it said that. I'm like, oh, oh. Okay. We got Jim writing movies now. Oh, yeah. Hey, Jim mm-hmm. from The Office has some good ideas, man. Don't knock it. Mm-hmm. Also, dude, the marshmallow if that is the funniest one. Don't look him in the don't eye. Don't look him in the eye. Which one? Which, which one? Eye? You know which one. Oh, it, it'll grow back. <laughs> I love that. Just the back and forth banter alone is already worth the price of admission for me. I'm sorry, but Gene the Invisible F is every time he brings it up it's hilarious the to me. What kind of kid comes up with an invisible if? All right. All right. All right. So that's our general news. Those were the two trailers that got released from CinemaCon. Can you believe it? CinemaCon, if we get two trailers. And like, and the thing is, is like how drastically different they are, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, Although, yeah. to be fair, they both have a lot to do with imagination mm. in a way. That's true. I mean, because you got to think with what's happening in Joker, a lot of that's just got to be in his head. True. Even with the original Joker. All right. So now we move on to gaming news. I've been wanting to it's talk about this. Trip. That's the one thing I don't get. I I know it's a running gag, but there's something that keeps making Brian Riddle's trip. I'm sorry. It's an imaginary. It's it's literally an invisible imaginary friend. Yeah. Oh, Somebody made it, an invisible yeah. if. Okay. Yeah, that's what I it didn't is. Catch that when I was like, first watching why it, make uh... an invisible imaginary friend when you're the only one that could see the imaginary friend? By making it invisible, not even the kid could see it. <laughs> yeah, that's what he's talking about. All right, so on uh, to gaming news. Guys, I've been wanting to talk about this all week. Desperate Bungie is best Bungie. This came out on Tuesday. Mm. This made waves. We've got a positive, we've got very positive news stories coming out of Bungie. And then we've got negative stuff coming out. Guys, they did it again. We're going to talk about Ubisoft and how they done messed up again. <laughs> but before that, let's get on to the positive stuff. Holy shit. So, guys, remember Bungie took an extra three months to work on Destiny 2 The Final Shape. And then they released a gameplay reveal, uh, Vidoc, this Tuesday. <laughs> To show us what they've been working on for these three extra months. Well, it seems like the execs just step back and let the devs cook. Mm-hmm. Holy shit. They revealed three major things. On top of, keep in mind, that very day, they dropped Horde Mode, brought back a lot of weapons that they had sunset, some of which they hadn't, but a lot that they had, brought them back, and you can now play Horde Mode, a 50-wave Horde Mode, in game, get those weapons, all sorts of great gear. Rocket jump is now a thing in the game. <laughs> you can you can shoot the grenade launcher, hop into the ground, reload while you're in the air, shoot it again. Bam! That's kind of cool. Uh, Mountaintop is a great grenade launcher, just so you know. 
So Mountaintop is back. Uh, they're back in the metal. Yeah, they let them cook and they cooked gourmet. Yeah, they did. All right, so first thing, mm -hmm. within 52 seconds, Destiny players, veteran Destiny players, looked to the bottom left and they wept. For they saw... They got to see the fight. For them. you see... They saw there was a bar underneath the super bar, but then they also noticed something else that was strange. The hunter on screen had an arc super, but a stasis grapple ability in place uh, that's of... Strand. Oh, I'm sorry. Strand grapple ability in place of the grenade. Strand melee and solar no, dodge. Stasis melee. Me God damn it. Yeah, stasis melee because it's the disc, Stasis so melee. Throw, stasis melee and a solar dodge. Four different elements. Four. Mm hmm. What the fuck is going on here? And so they start playing, and we're like, oh, hey, look, it's the D1 tower we're fighting on. That's kind of cool. Oh, that's neat. We're fighting like this boss enemy. And then boss enemy got melted just about. And within 52 seconds, we saw all of those abilities at play back to back consecutively. And then round two came around and back to back consecutively. What the fuck is happening? And so they introduced Prismatic, which is the new subclass, which combines elements of abilities from all different subclasses. And we're like, wait, what? And it's not even just that. It's the subclasses of all other classes no 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 they show a tank who uses a uh, a titan who uses a warlock ability uh no actually the warlock snap is still just warlock only that wasn't a titan what? yeah sadly damn we get it, it looked wrong. like a titan it did it was still a warlock okay. yeah it would have been cool if it wasn't <laughs> that would have been amazing uh but so we see all that I uh, highly, highly recommend that you go and check out the Vidox. The entire gaming space was talking about this, and that was the first third. They went into depth talking about it and the build crafting, how you get more aspects and fragments for it so you can you can build your character's uh, loadout the way that you want and make it work for how you want to play. Because this is very... Destiny is going full in on like the MMO aspect of this. Like, the devs over at Bungie are just like, hey, you want to build your character the way you want? And keep in mind, this is on top of them announcing that Character Creator is back. You can go back and you can change how you want your character to look again under the helmet. Like, uh, mm -hmm. if, or if you want to take your helmet off and change how your character looks, you cannot change their race, but you can change their appearance. <laughs> Which nice. is fine. Which is fine. But... Uh, yeah, they did that, uh, on top of the, like expanding out certain supers because you're inside the traveler and making the light, the light supers a bit more powerful. You get that. So you're now, a, a, a you can now use light and dark together. Uh, when you enter this prismatic state, this transcendent state ability, you can throw grenades depending on what your class is. You're using two different elements. You're either using... Uh, fire and ice as a hunter, uh, st strand and arc as a titan, or you're using stasis and void as a warlock. That's part mm -hmm. one. Part two was when they revealed that they are bringing in exotic. Uh, <laughs> they're they're bringing in exotic class items. And they haven't had exotic class items since Destiny 1. And to be fair, the exotic class items only gave you a 5% XP boost. So they weren't really that powerful. <laughs> this is different. Very. These exotic class items allow you to steal perks from other exotics. And not just other exotics. Exotics that belong to other classes. So things that used to exclusively belong to hunters or titans can now be given to warlocks. And vice versa. So there's no such thing as a class-specific exotic anymore. So you, not only do you, can you put on an exotic class armor that allows you to basically have two exotics, which they solved the two exotic armor problem now, but you can wear two from any. Guys, I can't explain to you how terrifying it is 
to have a punchy, punchy Titan that can go invis every time it punches and kills something. <laughs> oh my God. Imagine the uh, hammer Titan, the flame hammer Titan. doing. Yes. That. Oh my God. That's what I'm saying. Never get hit ever again. <laughs> Dude, it was already terrifying, the version that I saw that had a Way of the Assassin and Syntheseps, because you're literally talking about, you're literally talking about, um, like, if I punch it, I go invis, and when I'm surrounded by enemies, my melee gets stronger. Mm. That's literally Way of the Ninja right there. Uh, oh, yeah. Also, also, Star Eater scales... Uh, every time you pick up an orb after your super is full, next time you use your super, it does more damage. So there's literally super DPS stuff. And if you combine that with like, I, I can't remember what the other perk was, but there's another perk. And you put that on a golden gun hunter, you have literally destroyed bosses. You have melted bosses. <laughs> uh, uh, third, they introduced a new a new enemy race, something we have been asking for for years. They brought us the Dread, which is this whole new enemy witness faction that we saw one of last year. And that one that we saw was already a handful. We got the uh, Tormentors last year. That was the first of this new race. We're getting five more. Not variations on the Tormentor. These are all brand new stuff. We got the first flying combatant with wings called the Grim. And I love that they're calling it basically the gun bat. <laughs> it's kind of awesome. And then uh, they released a video or they released a blog the next day going into more details about that. And another thing that veterans also re realized is that there's been a dramatic change to the ui the ui has been cleaned up considerably <clears throat> and they went into detail about some of the ui changes and oh my god it was so helpful because now people like me who are just kind of like you're i, I come in and play as a casual uh, i will be able to understand my build crafting in a way better context so it will actually help mm -hmm. me with building my loadouts for my character. I'll know a lot better about what this thing does and that thing does. So it helps me when I'm setting up my mods and all that stuff. So build crafting becomes much more important and intuitive and understanding to me. Uh, but they also announced another thing that is starting at the end of this month. Just recently. And this was something I didn't get a chance to tell you, Moon Moon. On the 30th, they are dropping a raid gauntlet. Mm -hmm. A gauntlet of raid mm -hmm. bosses. That is going to progressively get harder until the final shape. It will start off probably four different bosses. And then by the end, it's going to be eight bosses in this gauntlet. And it will be 20 power higher than you. It will be in contest oh, mode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you beat it, not only do you get really good gear, and they're all adept weapons, but you also get a title. God Slayer. Mm. Yeah. So, you know, there's nothing better than going into the final shape and letting the witness teabag you with his nuts on your face and having the title God Slayer staring right back up at him. <laughs> mm-hmm. But yeah, Bungie cooked. Holy shit. They went above and, and they, beyond a lot of the stuff that, like, it was already, we were already going nuts with all the stuff for Into the Light, which is out right now. By the way, all the stuff I was talking about, the Horde mode, the Raid Gauntlet, the all the new weapons, uh, the Super Black Shader. Uh, oh, also, the two exotic quests, where you can get the Whisper of the Worm exotic, which is now fully craftable. Uh, they have the Whisper of the Worm out right now. It's going to be going on a three-week rotation, and then they're going to put out the zero-hour exotic quest where you can get the um, <laughs> the uh, Outbreak Perfected. Uh, and you can get the Catalyst for both of those by playing the Legend version of each of those. Uh, just make sure you do all the steps in the quest. But... Both all of that content that I just talked about on uh, Into the Light, all of that is free for everyone. 
They put all that content out absolutely for free. Only the final mm-hmm. shape stuff is the thing you have to pay for. But like pre-orders went up immediately once that Vidoc dropped because people saw that Bungie not only are delivering with gameplay, but like uh, over delivered with gameplay. It was, and the funniest thing that everybody was commenting was right when the PVP team finally got some balance for PVP, the PVE team goes, what balance? <laughs> balance? What is? What is balance? I, I'm sorry, but what? also the biggest, the biggest thing was everybody was talking about how bad is ad density and how tough are these bosses? How tough is the raid going to be? Because they just literally overpowered us the fuck up. Like how? I really hope how everything tough is, is this going to be? Extremely difficult, honestly. Oh, oh no! I'm absolutely playing on legendary when the or on legend mm. difficulty when this comes out. I want the hardest challenge possible. I give me God of War. You know that's what I'm getting. The God, the God powers. I want it feel like a God. <laughs> I well, I do too, but I also want I want the challenge. I'm like, bring it, bring it. If this is how we're yeah, doing that's it, what bring I mean. it. I just want I want the story to be great. That's the only thing that I have left and I have questions. So I need that story trailer to assuage the last of my fears because gameplay looks fucking fantastic. Oh, phenomenal. Yeah. Like, and I've been burned before because Beyond Light looked really good and I was excited. And then... (sighs) Strand was amazing. And then it was... Oh, by the way, by the way, as soon as you unlock certain, like you will be unlocking more and more of uh, this new subclass, you'll be unlocking more stuff of the new subclass as you go through the story. And as soon as you unlock it, it's fully unlocked. You don't have to buy currency or any of that shit to unlock it. No, no Puka Pond, no any of this other crap. Like it's fully unlocked as soon as you get it. Oh, and if you play right now, if you play right now, you can skip all of that Cosmodrome nonsense, go right to seeing Shaxx, jump in on, there's a treasure chest on the left of Shaxx. When you get to the back, inside it is a full set of armor and a full set of weapons, all 1810. That is pinnacle cap, baby. Mm -hmm. 100% pinnacle cap. So you can jump in and start playing with your friends on all of the free content immediately. No issues. Which I've already got that. Yeah. So Bungie, like I said, Bungie is cooking. Now, there is a grind. There is going to be a grind in the final shape for the exotic uh, class items because the uh, abilities that you get will be random rolled. But literally, you're not grinding to power up. You're grinding to get good rolls on gear, which is a lot more fun. Because you can still get some good ones, but you're grinding for that god roll. You know? And that's chasing... You're chasing the dragon. And that's always fun. You know? What you, what you doing over there, Fed? I'm reading up... Mo- watching the uh, video on... A- <laughs> The kilts for kids. Oh, oh, <laughs> dude! The one thing Bungie does is charity, man. They do a lot oh, of yeah. awesome charity. Eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars <laughs> raised so far. Yes. Oh, dude, it's so cool. All right, no strand grind. No, no strand grind. Like you get it, you get it. Is now a great time for people to try the game for free. The, yeah, the absolutely. The strand grind is not as bad as the freaking stasis grind the stasis grind was fucking horrible yeah i i love stasis for uh, god roll shinies for and the stuff i can get i don't want to have to do all that shit yeah yeah it is oh okay it's painful i'm i'm sorry strand to say we have easy to enough you just kill enemies with strand you will get stuff i'm sorry to say we have to jump into two pieces of bad gaming news now i'm sorry i'm gonna have to take your smile away there buddy <laughs> Let's Fucking talk about Ubisoft. let's talk about Ubisoft. All right, so the Star Wars Outlaws official story trailer comes came out. To be fair, I don't have anything. I don't have a problem with the story trailer. All right, uh, the game looks okay. I guess. I mean, <laughs> the gameplay the... stuff. 
the gameplay stuff that we saw earlier actually looked better than the, than this trailer. But whatever, you know. Uh, and then the internet got a hold of it, you know, as it do. And we found out, we were like, hey, who's the... Uh, and they were like, hey, guess what? This is what the face model looks like for the main character. And I was like, oh, man, she's gorgeous. And they're like, yeah, she is. Look at this picture of the main character. What the fuck happened? And that's what the internet's going nuts about because it was officially, uh, like, it was leaked by a person on the development team that they are uglifying a lot of people in games right now because they're scared of insulting the a, a specific community within within the LGBT community and it turns out that community is actually pissed at them because they're like why are you uglifying them uh that makes no sense you should you should be beautifying these characters because we want to be beautiful like when when we do when we do what we do we're not trying to look ugly we're trying to look like beautiful i'm going to go ahead and say it uh these people are trying to uglify people f so that they don't get in trouble with the trans community and the trans community is pissed at them because they're like look when i transition to a man i don't want to look like an ugly man i i, I like i don't want to look like a woman a, a man that looks like a woman i want to look like a man like, I want to just mm -hmm. be a man. I want to be accepted as a man. And the same thing with a uh, man that transitions to a woman. They don't want to look like a slightly mannish woman. They want to be a woman. They want to be recognized as a woman and a beautiful woman. So, guys, <clears throat> you're kind of making me agree with people that I typically disagree with on this one. Uh, and, you know, that's okay. You know, a broken clock is wrong. A uh, broken clock is right twice a day. Um... But yeah, I, I'm kind of siding with people. On... Now, do I think this is more of a non-issue in the gaming sphere? Yeah, a little bit. But it's not like it's without a point and without merit. I think the bigger issue here is the pricing of this game. I think that's the real one. This is where uh, this is where Angry Joe and I are like really on board. Did you really, Ubisoft, think we wouldn't notice you trying to charge players $130 for this fucking game for like a super uber title? Are you fucking kidding me? Like, I know I'm not really one to talk. I bought, I paid, I paid almost $300 for the collector's edition of uh, the final shape. But like... I was paying for more than just, like, the game and, like, the year pass and everything, which I could have got. All of that I could have got for, like, $100. But I paid for a lot of swag. Like, I paid for a lot of, like... Okay, first off, I paid for this. I want you to know, this is the Destiny 1 Tower. It comes with a bunch of stuff. You turn it on, lights up, it makes noises, right? It has multiple modes. I press buttons, it has sounds. It has music. It has ambient noises. I press another button. It goes into another mode. And funny enough, it initially comes with two little figures of Ikora and Zavala, and there's a hidden third figure of Cade 6 that you have to find in a very specific way. And I will not tell you how that, because if you have it, you have to figure it out for yourself. It is a hidden secret. Mm -hmm. Now, God damn it. Yeah, that voice line is always going to hit me because of... Yeah. Hold on. It gets better. Hey, uh... Take me with you. <laughs> Alright, hang on. Take me with you. Hmm. I need to set up more supply drops. Old ones are all tapped out. Time to put together a team. So, yeah, if you put the two of them on together, they have dual dialogue. Like, okay, so all that came with it. By the way, guys, 
here's a whole bunch of shit that also came with it. By the way, there's a spicy ramen shop in the tower. These are coupons for free spicy ramen, like lifetime supply. Mm. Uh, there is a patch for the final shape that I could put onto anything that I could just sew on or iron on. Uh, there is, all right, so there's specific flair that I can get, and there's a code for it that I will not show. Uh, but there's, there's literally, okay, so this is supposed to be an autograph book, but literally a character in the game said that they found this in the tower, or they purchased it in the tower, and it's literally a bunch of different characters in the tower, NPCs in the tower, not only that, but also kids in the tower, from different races and species in the tower, like, trying to show support and let you know that they are so proud of you and that they're wishing you the best and that they have all their hopes pinned on you and everything. Like they're trying to boost you up before you have to go and do this big final thing. And it's really, really cool. Not only that, you have a really, really nice handwritten letter from a character in the game. By the way, this is Ido, scribe of House Light. So this is literally an elixir that has learned to read and write and speak the human language. This is an alien race that did that. All right, so we have classified intel. Uh, literally, we have there is stuff in here that is coded that you have to go into raid secrets and work with other people in the raid secrets community to, to decode and figure out some of Bungie's hidden messages. Bungie is crazy about this shit. So when I say that, yes, it's a price tag, but Bungie makes it worth it, please understand, Bungie is not Ubisoft. You're getting what you fucking yeah. pay for. And there's also a bunch of other stuff, like lore nerds for Destiny. This book right here is everything you want, especially when it's for the final shape. And I haven't even finished it yet. So yes, it cost me almost $300, but this is the only time I have ever spent money that high on some destiny stuff and i'll be honest it's because i wanted the destiny one tower i wanted it so bad and i was like i'm getting that tower <laughs> i mean most collector's editions in general mm -hmm. offer something that makes it worth the money like i remember fucking seven years seven eight years ago when resident evil 7 released mm -hmm. i bought the collector's edition of that because i wanted the fucking house that played the song <laughs> and then my ex took it from me when we broke up, which Aww. pissed me off. But still, oh. it was enjoyable while I had it. Here's, Plus here's... having the finger USB drive was... It was uh, unsettling to my coworkers because I always used it at work. Here's the other thing. <laughs> it was awesome. Here's the other thing that I think is really, really, cool, really, really a disservice. If I was reading it correctly, I think that $130 price tag is for a digital version. It, that makes no sense considering a hundred dollars, hundred thirty. That's usually for like a deluxe edition that includes a season pass. Yes. But from everything I read, and the way I understand this is that's for the standard version. Yeah, that's a digital version. So that should like cost less, not more. Game. And 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 uh, this I'll is after this is of the gaming uh, creator. This is after we're having a large discussion about the digital gaming industry and how as soon as they basically shut down a game, they could just take it away from you. You have no rights to that game. It, the worst part is, and yet yeah, I, I, I will that. always side with the physical media in this, the physical versus digital argument, just because I've lost my internet at points and I could not play my digital games. I could always play my physical games because the license is on the disc. But games I wanted to play that were digital, I could not access. Yeah. All right. Going from gaming companies oh, to... Also, uh, one okay. thing I want to bring up to both of you. At 58 seconds in the trailer for this game, play it and tell me it does not look like fucking Team America with the little puppet animation bullshit. There were a lot of people. There were a lot of people that watched this trailer and thought the main character was a guy. I see Moon's looking it up. I'm not. I, I, I I've never seen know. Team America, so I could not do the comparison. Uh, Thunderbirds. <laughs> oh, I saw. Tell it. me I'm wrong, yes. Moon. Tell me I'm wrong. 
your dot. Because it was the way that the head moved and everything. And the hair and, blink, and the and fucking like... lipsticks just... Right. Looks like a fucking puppet. So back mm, to... It's terrible. Back to uh, more sad news in gaming. But this time, it's not the gaming... Or rather, it's not the gaming company or even the... Uh, or even the guys that were working on this. It's not their fault. It is It is 100% on Horror Inc., which I'm not surprised about. Uh, fuck hmm. Horror Inc. First, they try to screw the the original creator out of his uh, out of getting the rights back to his stuff because the copyright ran out. <laughs> uh, so Friday the Thirteenth, the game continues to be an illegal nightmare to anyone involved. The team behind the resurrected mod announced that the project's future is up in the air after receiving a copyright infringement claim. Announced on the official Friday the 13th Resurrected Discord and Twitter, the team behind the project announced it received a cease and desist letter from an attorney representing Horror Inc., which owns the rights to the Friday the 13th film franchise. The cease and desist letter, which is attached to the post below, mentions that the fan mod is an unauthorized use of the IP, describing it as an unlicensed knockoff Friday the 13th video game. The tweet states, as you may be aware, we have received a cease and desist from Josh Geller 2, who works for Greenberg Glusk and is Horror Inc.'s legal representative. With that, the project is most likely over, but we do plan to work on other projects. We're still waiting for a response from some... Hold on, I'm looking the tweet up. It didn't finish the whole thing. Uh, response from some people we have contacted, but for now we're working on removing all of Horror Inc.'s own content. It's a shame that someone wants to fight against a fan-made project with no profit made. It wasn't our intention to hurt the brand, as or Horror Inc. claims we did. Shut the fuck up, Horror Inc. We want to thank this amazing community. We've met a lot of cool people on the path we have had to, uh, uh, and we have had a lot of fun working on the project. We want to let you know that we did f uh, fight for you and we still do, but for now the project is over. Not only is the project over, uh, but so is franchise itself as it seems that Horror Inc. just wants to leave this incredible series behind them and let it be forgotten. You, as a big community, still can show uh, one last bit of love for the franchise and share this post to let people know that we tried our best. Big thanks to everyone who helped with the project in however they could. All of the work has been incredible, and we had a lot of plans that we were excited to share with you. We are also attaching the cease and desist as it was shared publicly on our Discord server by the Horror, uh, by the Horror Inc. lawyers. Thank you all, and hopefully we'll see you soon, Resurrected Team. Uh, they also replied back saying, We understand that many of you guys are upset about the announcement, but please don't harass anyone about what has happened regarding the mod. Keep everything civil. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that's how it is. And stuff. Yeah. And there we go. Uh, in the post, the team behind Friday the 13th Resurrected states that the project has been canceled in response to the letter. They plan to pursue work on another project. The team notes it is uh, still waiting for a response from some people that they've officially contacted, but kind of blah, blah, blah. Okay. Uh, Friday the 13th resurrected development team initially planned to announce a release date next Monday, April 15th. The project was designed as a free mod based on the 2017 horror game, which guys, if you haven't played was a really fun game. It was similar to dead by daylight, but like it was, uh, instead of four V one, it was like seven V one. And uh, Jason had a lot of really interesting and cool powers and abilities. Uh, the mod would have been free to own and include dedicated multiplayer services and fan-made content, inclu including new characters and skins. They would have also introduced the Jason X map 
<laughs> and Uber Jason. Because yeah, that yeah, was that one of the things nice. they were running. The fan project aimed to revive the horror game after its publisher, Gun Interactive, announced it was delisting at the end of 2023. While the game remains playable for those who bought it before its delisting, Gun Interactive plans to shut down the servers altogether at the end of... Uh, altogether on December 31st, 2024, before its delisting, Gun Interactive was forced to halt development of the new game roughly two years after its release. Uh, among the canceled content planned for Friday the 13th, the game included a werewolf mode with gameplay similar to Fortnite's imposters mode, or most notably, Inner Sloth's social deduction game Among Us. So, yeah, there were ideas for that that completely got canceled because of the nonsense going on with the legal battle with horror Inc. And there were multiple people that thought it was, uh, because of, um, the creator wanting his rights back and all that stuff, because horror Inc did a really good PR campaign trying to blast him. And then he went on multiple podcasts and shows with, uh, like fans and stuff and talked to them about the actual process of what was going on. And the story started to come together and people realized, no horror Inc is being shit. And, like, Horror Inc.'s PR is just getting worse and worse, and, yeah, fans are kind of done with them. <laughs> uh, so, this is just another example of how far they have fallen at this point. Yeah. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. And, I mean, it's good to know that the servers are kind of still up. We can host, like, a dedicated server. I'd, we used to play back in the day. I'd love to get uh, Carson on because that's where the whole Father Jason meme started. And, like, the Kermit's <laughs> thing, like, all got started there. We had, like, a lot of fun playing back in the day. I would love to hop back on Friday the 13th and get some stuff going. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll have to talk to Carson to see if we can do what we're doing. Uh, but yes, guys, behind the scenes, we are talking about doing more varied content with other members of Fat Dog and getting some stuff out there because there's a lot of stuff that we want to do. Uh, but people weren't showing up and or weren't around. Like we thought we'd have more varied. We thought we'd have more people to do stuff. And then no. <laughs> but yeah, we want to do stuff. So we will. It gets difficult. Yeah, I... <laughs> Somebody asked me why I don't do more streams on Twitch, and I was like, because I have life. I have to do things like life. And if I do stream, I have no life. And I cannot. I miss having a life. What's that like? I don't know. I work. What is life And like? then I voice act. And then I sleep. And I repeat. How dare. How dare you work? What are bills? Dude, if I could fucking get get out of my current job, you know I would. Yeah, I hate my job. I mean, I, I feel Calvin is kind of the same way. I feel. All right, next up, what do we got? I think Moon should take this one. Where are, are we out of the game stuff now? Finally, yes, yes. we're finally yes. onto the last three anime. Yes, Moon Moon, please talk. Ooh. Moon Moon, please talk. Will do. Oshinoko anime gets revival screenings early screenings of second season premiere. The staff of the Oshinoko anime announced on Thursday that there will be a revival screening of the anime's first 90-minute episode, Mother and Children, for two weeks, starting on June 7th in Japan. There will be a Dolby Cinema version available. In addition, the first episode of the anime's second season will get an advanced screening in Japan starting on June 30th. The first season's first episode got an advanced screening in Japan March 2023. April 12th is the one-year anniversary of the first season. Two days the second ago. season will premiere in July. High Dive will stream the second season. I'm and so the mad that they get to see it stories. before us. Yeah. I'm so I know, mad. right? I'm yeah. so fucking mad. This is one of the few times I would actually pay to go to watch to a movie theater to watch the first episode of an anime. Mm. Even to though I know what's coming, uh, I'd still want to watch it. Exactly. We're going to be busy around that time anyways. Well, at least for the 30th. Hmm. Yeah, that that is also very true. Mm -hmm. June thirtieth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna be very busy. Oh be busy. yes. Speaking of which, I need to talk to you after stream about uh, that whole for that whole thing. Good news. Good news. I swear. Okay. 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 Yeah, me worried for a second. I was like, "You motherfucker." No, no, it's good news. I swear. You dirty rat. 
All right, and next up, official Naruto post. I bet Splinter creator... loves that joke. <laughs> creator Masashi Kishimoto doesn't Yo, post creator on Masashi media. Kishimoto. Social media has changed on how or changed how we interact with people by allowing us unparalleled access to celebrities, politicians, and many others. But not every famous person posts it on their social media accounts. Sometimes they leave it to a team, or the posts go through a publicist. While it's true many manga creators write their own social media posts, some do not. Among those who do not is Naruto creator Masashi Kishimoto. But both the official Japanese and English X, formerly Twitter, accounts for Naruto stated on April We're, we're just 8th, calling it Twitter. We're just calling yeah, it I always Twitter, call it yeah. Twitter. Uh, stated on April 8th that Kishimoto does not post on any social media service. This statement comes about three and a half years after at least one parody Twitter account appeared, claiming to be owned by Kishimoto. Yeah, While the no. act. <laughs> well, at the Kishimoto Musashi with two S's account on Twitter has a blue check mark. It's difficult at first glance to discern if this is the real Kishimoto or not, it's not. due to Twitter's policy regarding authentic users. That is until you read the profile of the account, which the final text says parody account. Still a cursory look can potentially fool anybody. Uh, fun fact for anybody who has a Twitter account, you literally just pay for a blue check mark. They don't have to verify anything. It's yeah. like eight dollars a month. That's how Elon do it now. Yeah. While it's unclear if the Japanese and English Naruto Twitter accounts are citing the above mentioned account, they are taking their due diligence in informing Naruto and Kishimoto fans about the creator's lack of social network usage. It's a shame Kishimoto does not. No, it's not. It's not a shame that he does not post on social media. Bro, he's older than me. Shut the fuck up. Exactly, it's like, come on. Okay. Social media is not the end-all, be-all. If less people used it to spread fucking disinformation, life on the world would be a lot better. The planet would be in mm. less of a dire situation. Exactly. Mm. Fuck, social media... Yeah, I'm going to sound like a boomer when I say this. Social media, like, it should not exist. No, 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 no. Social media is a tool like anything else. It is user sensitive. It is what okay. you do with it. It is what you do uh, with let it. Let me rephrase that. Social media should not exist to the extent that everybody uses it. Yeah, here's the thing. Here's the thing. They said the same thing about the newspaper, the camera, the video. That Like, this is not new. They said I know the it's same not thing new, about but... cassettes, videotapes. They said it about rap, rock, R&B. So... Like, I say this from the a manager's radio. perspective because when I ran GameStops, I had employees who were more focused on Twitter and Facebook than they were on doing their jobs while getting paid with customers in store. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you that behavior that behavior wouldn't have changed even if they didn't have their phones in front of them. Oh, no, I made it a strict policy that phones are, were only to be used in emergency situations. Yeah, but I'm just telling you that. that and I got fired for it. I'm going to tell you right now that those things would not have changed even if that stuff was not available to them. La uh, laziness is laziness, and that wasn't going to happen. Oh, yeah, laziness is definitely laziness. I'll agree, but it's still... The, it's technology, just... the technology is not the problem. They would have acted the same way. That, that is... Yeah, it's stupid. Anyway, yeah. on to the last story. Crunchyroll to screen Haikyuu, the dumpster battle, which is really, that's going to be the English name of it? Okay. <laughs> Okay, uh, Blue Lock, the movie, episode Nagi, Overlord, the Sacred Kingdom anime films. So it has now been updated. Crunchyroll announced on Tuesday that it has acquired the North American and select international theatrical rights to Haikyuu, Battle of the Garbage Dump, which is what it should be called. Uh, Blue Lock, the movie, episode Nagi, and Overlord, the Sacred Kingdom anime films. Um uh, the Haikyuu movie is the first in the two-part Haikyuu film sequel uh, project and will screen in North American theaters on May 31st. The film will screen in Japanese with English subtitles and with an English dub. International screenings are listed uh, as May 30th in Australia, New Zealand, Denmark, Italy, Switzerland, 
Italian-speaking versions in Netherlands, Argentina, Brazil, uh, Central America, Costa Rica, El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, Nicaragua, Panama, Chile, Colombia, Ecuador, Mexico, and Peru. On the uh, May 31st in Canada, Finland, Ireland, Norway, Poland, Spain, Sweden, United Kingdom, and the United States. Uh, Turkey on June 7th. June 12th, Belgium, France, Luxembourg, Switzerland, for the French speaking. Uh, and on June 25th, Austria and Germany. On June 27th, Switzerland, for the German speaking. The film premiered... Oh, no, we don't need to do all that nonsense. Blue Luck, the movie episode Nagi, the anime film, will be uh, hitting North American theaters on June 28th. The film will screen in Japanese with English subtitles and with an English dub. Uh, Overlord, the Sacred Kingdom, the new film project from the Overlord anime, will screen in North American and select territories. Those select territories include Europe, the Middle East, Africa, and Latin America. So there we go. Instead of a season five, it looks like we're getting a movie. Interesting. Yeah. And that is all the news that we have for today, guys. That is everything. Mm -hmm. We have wrapped up Anime Church on time. We did take our time with the uh with the beginning with the uh, i knew destiny was going to take a while and i knew we could take our time reviewing slime and mishoku tensei because it, we didn't have a lot of news news and to be fair yeah. when we do review stuff it does take at least an hour <laughs> yeah 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 uh, unless it was the last of us in which case that was the first hour and a half of every show yeah <laughs> It was a lot. It was a lot. But there was season two. Of but that. it was so good. It was. I I also love I also love people sitting there saying the last of us finally broke the curse and then fucking uh the Jeff through literally going people with amnesia looking at people with amnesia like and then it's Jigglypuff staring really really hard in the cafe from the fucking <laughs> Detective Pikachu movie and I'm like yeah yep. no Detective Pikachu broke the curse let's be real. They did it. Detective Pikachu did Ryan it. Ryan Reynolds sing, sad singing you, the Pokemon theme song was the best thing I've ever watched. <laughs> I want to be the very best. <laughs> the <laughs> no one ever no was. One so ever good. Was. So good. <laughs> All right. Guys, we will see you in just a few hours for solo levelings. Mod will reading over on the Twitch channel. Link in the description. Please make sure to go and check that out. Show some support. Give us some love. If you did not know, we're reading solo leveling. Uh, we are not just reading. We are live acting. We are live acting manhwa. the solo yes. leveling manhwa. And guys, we're starting volume three of the manhwa. If you're an anime only, don't worry. We have not passed the anime. Not oh, no. by no. Not, not by a long shot. We are. If you remember no. the arc with the assassin from the Hunters Guild, we're starting that arc. So we're oh, about I to... get to have a lot of fun tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, so yeah. come join us. It's oh, going to be the three of us and a couple tonight. more. Uh, Moon Moon is actually Jin Wu. And you can hear him you again. You hear a lot of me. You can hear him again as Jin Wu in the upcoming solo leveling Abridged. Yep. Yep, yep. So that having been said, uh, look forward to seeing all of you there. Uh, that will be coming up in about two hours again over on our Twitch channel, which is, of course, twitch.tv slash fat underscore dog underscore studios. Uh, to answer your question, no, I have not watched the Fallout show yet. I'm actually waiting for it either. to get finished because I want to just binge it. I've heard so many good things about the first episode. I have but heard, pilot episodes tend to be better than most of the rest of this year. I have heard I have heard a lot of great things about the first four episodes. Because that was what was released almost immediately. And I'm like, oh wait, oh, okay. So Plus uh, I'm saving money because a Kaikon, I need all the money I can get for it. Well, because I'm taking that fucker down there to Fogo de Chao. Why are you taking what what no 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 no, I, I haven't had good fucking Wagyu since Texas, and even that was at a Korean barbecue, so I haven't experienced true Wagyu yet. <sighs> you haven't experienced Fogo. No, I haven't. Well, I don't have one up By here in my state. 
Edgar's oh, very no. evil for his birthday. He says he either wants Korean barbecue or Fogo. And I'm is, like, when is yes. his birthday? And is it going to be one word down at, at AkaiCon? So, no, his birthday is in the next couple weeks. Uh, and I don't know if he'll be with us uh, for AkaiCon or not. I don't think Verify with yet. him. Because if he's going to be at AkaiCon, I will fucking buy him Fogo. All right. Uh, just a heads up, there is a possibility of Calvin. Yay! Yay! Yeah. All right. That, makes that having been said, guys, we will see you next time. I will talk to you later. I have to show these fuckers Slime 9 before you can. But if you're a patron, uh, Slime 9 most likely today. That is what's That is what the forecast is looking like. Slime 9 today. All right. Love you all. See you in a couple hours. Bye-bye for now. Make sure to go to Twitch. Yes, please.